for a while. Uh, it's finally ready, clearly. Uh, I had put out a video, what, a little over a week ago, I think, uh, detailing why this got hung up, and as it turns out, that was wrong as well, because, yeah, I, I don't know. I went to start recording this, and it, it, the same problem. I don't know how it got fixed before and then came back, but I, I wound up eventually tracing it down to, um, let's just say complications with FAAD. So I'm going to get this out of the way just because I, I, I need to say this, because this approach is literally only being used here for this. <laughs> File System as a Database, or FAAD, is a niche object persistence approach. You overwhelmingly want to use some type of database system whether a relational database manager or an object-oriented database manager or a unstructured database manager like uh, key value stores or um, the so-called NoSQL databases, uh, your document databases. Um, this is a niche thing and literally only being used here to reduce the dependencies on the project. This is to demonstrate how to use Stringier for basic input validation and is not to be taken as a guideline for how to properly persist data. Now that that's out of the way, let me explain what we've got here. This is going to be a simple uh, CRUD interface to an employee registry. That is create, read, update, and delete, or as I've named them here, uh, and not in that same order necessarily, uh, add list, remove, and update. Um, the program itself is just a loop over this. It keeps asking for these, and you, you'll see how that works. Uh, this is non-standard. The, the, these functions are not in the uh, CLR, despite, especially here, looking like they are. Uh, these come from this. If you're interested in what that project is, I'll have a link down in the video description, but that's not really that important. Just know that, that, that this provides the uh, main menu that you'll see. And actually, let me show that off real quick so you know what I'm talking about. You have this here. If we go to list, nothing's been added yet. I didn't start this off with anything, so there's just nothing there. Um, And there's nothing to do at this point. I'm going to explain a little bit more, but you have an idea of what that is. You'll have the implementation of these methods, uh, of these, and this is going to be working just with the employee object. It's just persisting and modifying them. Um, inside of here is mostly just the stuff for describing the employee and doing the object persistence. Uh, in a more serious scenario, this you might not have these things here. It would depend on how your object persistence framework works. Um, my understanding is those are normally in a different class. But back to this. Uh, let's actually add an employee. So I'm going to do myself and we'll say I'm a programmer. Uh, sex is male and my birth date. Now we can go and list. And just to show you that this persistence is working, I close that. We'll start it back up. We can list again and you can see that record is still there. updating and we'll get to the problem and why you want to do validation in just a moment but uh, we'll do sex is and I don't know I got a sex change to uh, attack helicopter
Uh, this is so cramped that you can't really see, but it's... And I, I, I can tell you just from experience. This is an argument exception because you're trying to assign a value that just doesn't make sense. It's not part of the enumeration uh, to a type, uh, to a field of that enumeration type, and it just, it, it, it doesn't make any sense. In a more serious, like, you actually have this running in a business, especially given how remote is being uh, more of a thing, this is increasingly important. But normally what would happen is you send this data from your client machine off to wherever the database server is. It winds up dealing with that exception, sends back to you that uh, I couldn't do that for whatever reason, depending on the system you've got, you'll get a different error message, but y you wind up with that entire round trip. That takes up network time, that takes up network bandwidth, which in certain businesses especially, or certain regions of the world, can be a premium. And ideally, you'd like to catch as many of these errors as possible on the client before ever sending them off to the server. That is, if you know the data is definitely bad, don't send it off. Okay. That's where input validation comes in. And to be fair, it's not like Stringier introduces this and it hasn't happened before. Uh, the, the typical way you would accomplish this is with regex. This is just an example of how to do the same kind of thing with Stringier if you're interested in that for performance reasons or you already have the patterns defined or whatever. So we're going to want to... We'll deal with the sex first. Uh, this also happens with the birth date. Um, the name and the title are just single strings. Uh, and the name is not split up. If you know much about globalization, you know that you do not want to split that up because global names are complicated. Leave that as a single string. But this does happen with the sex and the... Um, and the birth date. So what we're going to want to do is add a pattern for sex and we're gonna need to put that in a few places so let's just do that here. Uh, we have private only pattern. Uh, this can be static. And we'll call it um, sex pattern. And this can just be male or female. Right? Makes sense. Uh, if you are familiar at all with parser combinators, you'll know that most parser combinator libraries require you to actually like wrap these individual strings up because a literal is not a function. Uh, stringier is purely declarative, so you don't have to mess around with that, which is really convenient. Um, this is... Oh, you... Let me run this as is, and I can show you a potential pitfall. Um, actually, that won't show you the pitfall at all. Is when the end, yeah. So, ideally, you want these to be case insensitive because we're not talking about parsing like a programming language, say like C sharp, which this is written in. Uh, normal language isn't case sensitive, so you will want to assign these a specific comparison type, and you can do that with width, and then the uh, compare case insensitive. And then again for this one. And now both of these comparisons will be done without regards to case. Which is useful. Um, 
I am looking into a syntactic sugar for that, by the way. Uh, some way of declaring that there's a set of possible options with one common comparison type, because I, I understand this can be a little bit tedious to write out. Uh, currently, that's how it would be done, but these are meant to be composed in most cases, so you'd still only declare it one time for each. Now we need to add this validation. Uh, let's do it for the update first, and we'll just keep going incrementally. So, the update sex. We get that string, and then we do the enum parse to bring it into the actual enumeration type. So you're going to want to do the validation in between there. So we'll have um, if, and then we called that what, sex pattern, can consume that and yeah that's fine so if that works then obviously you can do the enum parse this would basically be something that's happening on the actual server the remote server um, so this would be like your actual SQL statement that goes off to the server to say update this record within this table. Um, this would normally be a very expensive operation. Obviously for this specific example it's not, but normally this would be where your send-off uh, happens. And then if that doesn't work, uh, if that fails to validate, um, I would say you would want to prompt again. So what we'll do is console write line, write out the error. Okay, so we'll get the error message, and then we want to prompt again. So, easiest way to do this without possibly causing a stack issue later on would just be uh, sex prompt and a go to. So now, We run this, that record is still there, so we're going to give me a sex change to attack helicopter. Okay, so now that error was caught on the client side and prompted for a correct value again, knowing that if you were to send it off to the server, that it would guaranteed not work, and it would have to come back, wasting a whole round trip. Wasting time, using up network bandwidth. This is good. We can say, hey, uh, I'm a female now, I guess, and we can list uh, the employees, and we've got female. Okay, now let's change that back. Oh, ah, I just removed it instead. Oops. Either way, though, um, you can see that if we do a new one, we're going to say programmer again, but we're going to say attack helicopter here as well, and... You get, it's cramped again, but you get the exact same issue, and that's because 
inside of this one, we have, uh, where is it? We get the, the string for their input for the sex. And then here where we're constructing the new employee object, that's where we have the enum parse that fails. So immediately after this is where we should be doing the validation. And conveniently, since these are already defined, we can just more or less copy this entire uh, uh, approach and say sex prompt. And if uh, sex pattern consume sex. Uh, we don't need to do anything if this passes, because we're going to do something with all of it if it passes at the very end. So instead, this is going to be if it fails to consume, uh, it fails to parse, we're... might as well just copy that error message, actually, uh, along with the go-to. And we can prompt for that again. All good. You will want to do the same thing with the birth date. And you may notice that I've been putting the birth date in in ISO format, despite getting it out here in my local format. Uh, I'll quit out of this and I'll show you that. When we go to list employees, um, can see the birth date doesn't have anything about the culture specified so it's always going to work on the local culture and when it comes to this about date time, i believe this will actually work with any birth date string that it recognizes uh let me try this real quick we'll update employee me. Uh, we're going to change my birth date to, and we're going to use the local format, which is 413.290. Done. List. Okay, so it works either way. Uh, let's say for whatever reason, like a database limitation, you have to use ISO birth date format. Um, this is sort of a good idea anyways, just because you wind up with some potential confusion, especially if you're like an international company, depending on what the... the certain dates get really confusing. Like, let's say my birth date was a week earlier, on April 6th of 1990. Six... 1990 is also a valid date and depending on what part of the world you're in is the normal format for that date so yeah most of you especially if you're European you know the kind of problems I'm talking about so let's let's just add in some validation that requires it to be an ISO date uh, and this also helps deal with the round trip problem in case it's not a valid date format. Uh, so we're going to do. Pattern, birth date pattern. And in this instance, let's make sure. Yes, I am. Okay. So birth date, you can have one or two digits for the 
Well, no, because ISO is the year first. So you're going to have four digits there. This is then going to be followed by an apostrophe, or not a, a hyphen, because that's what the ISO dates, uh, if you're following the standard very strictly, that's what the ISO dates work, uh, use. And then you have So you're going to have one or two digits. I do have as a feature request that I need to implement uh, two versions from the current. Uh, the ability to use ranges here so that this would be a little bit easier to write. Um, in the future, you'll be able to just do one to two inside the repeat and this will work. But for now, uh, what you're going to have to do is uh, then and a decimal digit number and then uh, maybe a decimal digit number. Okay. Then we're going to have another hyphen and this whole thing again. Oh. Obviously in this instance, a little bit easier to write with regex. I'll get back to that in, uh, after and show you a neat and useful trick that Stringier supports for situations like this where regex is really actually easier to write. Um, in most cases I find that this typically doesn't show up where there's not a huge difference between the overall syntax, but obviously with something like decimal digit number versus the uh, backslash D that regex uses, one of these is obviously a bit easier to write. Um, and I've taken a more, much more collaborative approach when it comes to resolving these kinds of things. So you, you can inject regex as part of a pattern. Ah, what am I doing? We want the update one. So let's not forget that. We've got update birth date and we'll have the birth date. Would help if I could spell birth date prompt. And we're going to do the same pattern for the validation. Okay, and we'll know we need to copy that for up here, where uh, uh, yeah, we can have that, and then if not, if it's not able to parse. We'll write the error and prompt for the birth date. So, uh, we can go ahead and remove my record. I'll show off adding it. Okay. 
and we'll do the date like before. Okay, so it's saying that it expects an ISO date format, which my birth date in ISO would be that, which failed. Oh. And that binding got broken, so let's... There we go. Why did that fail? Sometimes I'm an idiot. Add the record. Programmer. Sex is male. And we'll use the local date format. Which of course doesn't work. We'll use the ISO date format. Which does work. And let's make sure that it got through correctly. Which it did. Okay. Now, I was going to show how you can actually use regex as part of this if you wind up in a situation like this where it's something I haven't gotten around to optimizing the syntax wonderfully. It's not quite there yet with this one, so... Construct your regex like normal. Uh, we need to include the appropriate namespace, however. But construct your regex like normal. Uh, just make sure that it is anchored to the very beginning, and that's because how the adapter works. Um, the reason why the parser call is called consume with stringier is because there's an actual source object, and the calls to the parser always consume characters within that, so it's always advancing your position. Uh, often called consuming the source. Because it always starts at the current position, in order for regex to work with this approach, you always has to be anchored at the start. Uh, it is validated. If you try to use the adapter without the anchor, it will throw an exception when the object is initialized, stating exactly what I just described. Um, just explaining now that that is a thing you'll need to be aware of. We can go and I'll, I'll use this just because I know from experience this is slightly faster and we know that you're only going to have Arabic numerals. Uh, so this is always going to be 4, and then we have a hyphen, we've got 0 through 9, and we've got uh, 1 or 2, and then 0 through 9, and we know we have 1 or 2. And then we can end that off, and then as pattern. That will pass it through the adapter, doing all the validation, and nothing needs to change otherwise. We can run this. And an employee. Hopefully I remove the last one, because otherwise we will get an exception, but I'm pretty sure I remembered to do that. We'll do local date format, which should not pass. And of course it doesn't. Do ISO date format, which works just fine and good. That's more or less it for this one. Um, it's fairly basic, but input validation is a basic task. There's not a lot of complexities behind it. Um, if you have any ideas for more stuff I can apply this to, uh, definitely 
suggest that down in the comments and I will get around to creating that video. Uh, I will have a link to the repo where these sources are located if you're interested in playing around with this, such as adding new fields to the employee and then testing out validation on those new fields. Uh, you will be able to do that. Uh, that's part of the reason why I made sure that this doesn't use a database is so that it's easy to do that so that you don't have uh, a dependency on having a specific library already installed to you that you can access that database. This just works on everything. Everything. Um, yeah, I don't really know what else to say for this one, so I'm just going to wrap it up. Have a good one, guys.